Hi everyone, my name is Ilya. I'm a software engineer at Report Portal. Today we'll be exploring how to integrate Report Portal with the Playwright test framework. If you are using Playwright to write and run your tests, you can send the results to Report Portal using our agent. The agent is a custom Playwright reporter that sends test execution results to Report Portal. Once set up, you can view these results in real time, which is particularly useful for lengthy and extensive test suites. Moreover, Report Portal can analyze your data using machine learning algorithms. If you are looking to expedite the process, you can delegate it to the Report Portal Analyzer to quickly identify the root causes of defects. Report Portal also provides a comprehensive visualization of your automation process, allowing you to generate charts, track trends, and keep an eye on your project stability. And many, many more. Let's walk through the steps to set up our integration. First, we need to install the engine into our project. Next, we need to input some Report Portal instance data within the configuration. Finally, although it's not required, adding extra data to your report can enhance its detail and help you fully utilize Report Portal's features. Our packages are published on two registries, NPM and GitHub packages. You can choose your preferred package manager to install. Here are the commands to install it using NPM, YARN or PNPM. Let's move to the development environment and install the engine in our project. We have a small project here with two files containing Playwright tests. They are here. A package JSON and a Playwright config file. So let's call the installation command. As we install, note that we are saving the package to the dev dependencies as it doesn't affect production usage. Once installed, it appears in our dependencies. As of this recording, the latest version is 5.1.8. OK. The next step involves configuring the agent and providing some basic options that will connect report portal with your test files. If you don't already have a Playwright config file, you will need to create one. Once you've filled in the mandatory options, running your test as usual will make the report available in report portal. We've presented some basic options here, but you can find a complete list with details in the agent's repository. Let's open the Report Portal demonstration instance, version 24.1, to obtain the necessary properties from its UI. We can log in via GitHub and then navigate to the profile page. Here you will find the configuration examples for Node.js. We can simply copy the JSON object presented here to paste it into our project. I will paste it here and assign it to a variable. Okay. We have the project and endpoint fields filled out. Next, we need to name the launch that will appear on the launch page. We have just launch name here. Let's change it to something like custom regression with Playwright. Now we need to provide the API key. The API key can also be generated in your profile on the API keys page. Simply click the generate button and type in the meaningful name for how this key will be used. Once it's copied, return to the project and use it. I have already generated an API key for this video and pasted it in the environment variable. We can access it from the environment by typing process.env.reportportal API key. And that's it for the agent configuration. Now we just need to instruct Playwright to use the agent as a reporter.
Once that's done, we can check how it works. We simply need to run our test as usual. npm run test should do the trick. The test suite has now started. Meanwhile, we can monitor the progress in the report portal. Let's open the launch page, refresh its state, and we see the first launch named Custom Regression with Play right here. Even though it's still in progress, we can delve into it to see the reported structure. Here we have our Playwright project and several tests within it. If the launch is in progress, the state can be refreshed to get the latest results. So let's go back to all launches page. We have six tests here. Three failed, one skipped and two passed. Alright, let's return to the code. We can also check the embedded reporter in Playwright. The statistics here match exactly. Now that we have the basic report in report portal, let's delve deeper into what additional data is and how to provide it. Here we have various types of additional data. Description and attributes can be used to specify any extra information about the test and can also be used for filtering and building some widgets, like component health check. Extra logs can be also provided and any attachments can be added to the report. The test case ID can be used as a history ID across different launches. There is also the option to change the status in the report portal for a particular test result. Detailed information about the data and methods for adding it can be found in the agent's repository within the readme instructions. Let's go through the options one by one. How do we provide attributes and a description? It's quite straightforward. We just need to import the reporting API from the agent package and use it within our tests. Here we've provided two attributes. They typically have a key value structure. But just a value can also be used. The description is simply a string that explains what the test case is about. Now let's go to the project and apply these changes to our tests. We will start by importing our reporting API and using it to provide a description and attributes. Let's apply changes here. There are attributes and description added. For instance, we can add that this test is a demonstration test and specify the browser that this test is running in. For the description, we can add some detailed information about this test. I've also prepared similar data for other tests, so let's paste that in and apply it to another test file as well. Now let's run our test again to see how it looks in report portal. Going back to the browser. There is our new launch here. Let's refresh for updates. We can delve deeper into it and check the tests. Here we have the test cases and we can see that the attributes have been applied. Now we can use these attributes to filter the list if needed. For example, to see the test result list for Chromium browser only. For failed test cases, the description is automatically extended with the latest error. The description also supports markdown format so you can enhance your descriptions using Markdown as you see it here. Check out the item editor on the UI and you can easily edit something here and preview it. Let's move on. The next significant part of the data that can be added to the reports are logs and attachments. If you are writing logs to the standard output, they will be caught by the agent and reported as is. Additionally, you can use the reporting API methods to provide logs with specific log levels. As for attachments, they can be provided using Playwright's native attach method. 
For instance, if we want to attach a screenshot to the test, we simply create the screenshot and then call the attach method on the test info object. Here, we just need to provide the body, which is the screenshot itself, and its content type. Let's see how it looks in the code. Here is an example. We can add some logs here. Like some link will be clicked. Let's add more. And for another test file as well. As for attachments, we simply take a screenshot and then attach it to the report as we discussed. Now let's run our test again and check the data in the report portal. That's our fresh launch, let's refresh the page. And now we can delve into the deepest level and check the test where we've provided logs and attachments. There are no logs for past test, just going further. And here we have several logs that we've added. And there are error logs that is reported by default in case of failure. We also have two screenshots here, because one of them is taken by default if mentioned in the playwright config and another one added by us. Okay. The next piece of data that can be added to the report is test case ID. If you want to mark your test as a specific test case from a test case management system like Jira, you can use a test case ID. It can be set using the reporting API, just call the set test case ID method and provide a value. If you change an item's test case ID, the history of its previous executions won't be shown as they will be considered results of a different test case. Let's set it for one of our tests and check the outcome. Here we have a test called just test. Let's set the test case ID for it. Let it be test123. Alright, let's run the test and go to report portal. Our launch available here, but let's open the previous execution of this test. Here we have our test case ID, which is by default generated based on the test code reference, where the test is located and parameters, if they exist. The value is usually unique and won't change across executions unless its location changes. How does this help us analyze the test results? In Report Portal we have a history page, where we can see the history of this test from all previous executions to the current one. For example, here we see the executions of the test from launches 3, 4 and 5. We can see that the test previously failed. Let's go back to the main page and see what changes when we manually set the test case ID. When we open the details of this test in the last, last launch, we can see that the new test case ID presented here. However, when we open the history page, we won't see the history of this test case from previous executions. So, if you are planning to move the test from one test scenario to another and want to keep its execution history synced, you can explicitly set the test case ID. Historical data can also be viewed on the test page with logs, the final page view of the test case. Let's check. We can see that this item has no previous executions, and we don't see any historical items here. But if we go to previous launches again, we will see that uh, th this test has an execution history. Alright. What about the status? 
The status represents a test outcome, which is usually passed, failed or skipped. If for some reason you want to specifically update the test status in report portal only, you can use this option. Let's go to the code and see how to handle it. We know that this test named has the correct title has previously passed, but we can use the reporting API to set a different status for it. Let's use reporting API and set the status, for example, to failed. OK, now let's run our test again and see what's displayed in report portal. Here we have our latest launch. Let's delve deeper and check the test result. This is our test, has a correct title, uh, and it was passed during uh, the test framework executions and the previous executions as well. Now it has a failed status, which we set explicitly. That wraps up today's video. You now know the key steps to integrate your Playwright automation with Report Portal. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on new videos and guides and product updates. The link to the GitHub repository with the agent and example is provided below the video. Make sure to visit our website, read the documentation and join our Slack channel to engage with the community and the core team for any questions. Thanks for watching.